Good evening. You are watching News Mongolian MNB World. I'm your host, Jugdir Gambold. And uh, for our top stories for today, the Conquest 2023 multinational peacekeeping exercise has been released. Government to revise pension calculation method. The Mongolian Economic Forum 2023 will be held for the 10th time on July 9 to 10. For other news, stay with us. On June 19, the opening ceremony for the 19th Annual Conquest Multinational Peacekeeping Exercise was held at the Five Hills Training Area. President of Mongolia and Commander-in-Chief of the Mongolian Armed Forces, Hursu Hochna, delivered the opening remarks. The President of Mongolia said Mongolia pursues open, independent and multi-pillared foreign policy and that Mongolia is developing cooperation with the United Nations and other nations. Mongolia joined in peace and security activities of the United Nations. Mongolia shipped off 21,000 soldiers to three continents and participated in more than 20 peace and security activities. The soldiers of Mongolia are serving at the peacekeeping operations now. In this exercise, Lao People's Democratic Republic participated for the first time and the Republic of Turkey participated in full. Since the pandemic, many countries have participated in this exercise and there have been more nations than ever before. Mongolia pursues open, independent and multi-pillared foreign policy. And we are developing cooperation with the United Nations and other countries. He said that in 13th century, Mongolians established the Mongol Empire and kept peace in Asia and Europe. Around 1,100 soldiers of 26 countries are participating in this international military practice of peacekeeping operations. Uh, so, so I think first uh, the idea is, is to build a close partnership from military to military with the Mongolian armed forces. And so I think first and foremost, it provides that opportunity. I think secondly, under the... Under the um, under the UN peacekeeping mission, it provides an opportunity for the 26 nations here to really come together and share tactics, techniques, and procedures to talk about important issues like women's women in peace and security, uh, as well as train and continue to build uh, those partnerships across our militaries. The Han Quest multinational peacekeeping exercise has a history of 20 years. During this time, our peacekeepers were successfully and actively serving in many places. It is a result of this operation. More than 18,000 soldiers from 67 countries have participated in the Han Quest exercise since its start. It is important to improve the skills of peacekeepers and develop cooperation. It is part of the biggest five activities that keep the peace in the Asia-Pacific region. The leadership of the working group in the parliament has explained that changes will be made to the method of determining civil pensions as part of ongoing pension law reforms. For example, the current uh, principle of determining pensions based on the wages and equivalent income over the last 20 years, using a consecutive seven-year period, will be revised to a five-year period in the draft. This draft is founded on the principle of fairness, which is why we have established a maximum amount to be paid for five consecutive years as stipulated by this draft. To ensure fairness, the draft incorporates specific legal restrictions, including a provision that mandates insured individuals to make a voluntary contribution equal to seven times the increase in the minimum wage. The member of the Working Group of Parliament have further clarified that the regulation aims to establish a comprehensive legal framework to proactively prevent potential negative situations. Moreover, policy adjustment will be made to expand the scope of coverage for social insurance premiums among herders. Under the proposed changes, if herders themselves contribute to social security based on the minimum wage, the government will assume 50% of the social security contributions for a duration of five years. 
The primary objective of the social insurance package outlined in the draft is to ensure that over 20% of herdsmen contribute to social insurance premiums. By expanding the coverage of social insurance premiums, these individuals can avoid future scenarios where they may be required to pay social insurance only once every 10 years or rely solely on welfare benefits. The Working Group of Parliament and Government Representatives have explained that the current policy of annually increasing pensions in accordance with the inflation rate, monetizing a specific percentage of a nominal pension insurance contribution account, and gradually raising the retirement age by three months per year will be maintained. Furthermore, discussions are underway to establish a legal framework that would provide an additional pension amounting to 10% of the pensioner's pension in the unfortunate event of the pensioner's spouse's untimely death. Within the bounds of the years to visit Mongolia, the Mongolian Economic Forum 2023 will be held for the 10th time on July 9 to 10. Approximately 1,500 participants are expected to participate in this conference to take place in five different locations at the same time. Prime Minister Ayung Erdin will open the forum and the Speaker of the Parliament, Dandan Shatter, will deliver the main speech. Sustainable development policy of Mongolia and Mongolian economy and sustainable development will be the themes of the general session of the first day of the forum. The panel sessions will focus on labor market, digital transition and e-business, trade opportunities, industry and food factory, agricultural investment and tourism. Prime Minister of Mongolia, Ayurtan, will present the main speech of the second day and the general session will be held under the themes New Future, New Opportunities and Infrastructure. Senior executives of the Asian Development Bank and Rio Tinto Group will attend the Mongolian Economic Forum 2023 and deliver speeches as honorable guests. On July 11, the guests of the forum will enjoy the opening ceremony of the National Festival Nadam, Cultural Festival, Horse Racing and Archery. Now please uh, take a look at the currency exchange rates uh, provided by the Mongol Bank. Now here comes the foreign news partnered with international news agencies. Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz has received China's Premier Li Chang with military honors in Berlin. Germany's Chancellor pressed China to lean harder on Russia over its war in Ukraine on Tuesday, while leaders from both countries pledged to work together to combat climate change as two of the world's biggest carbon dioxide emitters. The meeting in Berlin is the seventh time Germany and China have held high-level government consultations and comes a day after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met Chinese President Xi Jinping, indicating an effort by Beijing to reach out to the West and improve frosty relations. Li, a former Communist Party secretary for Shanghai who took office in March as China's number two official, met with German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier on Monday and also had dinner with Scholz at the Chancellery. China and Germany stand side by side to maintain the international system with the United Nations at its core, uphold true multilateralism, continue to adhere to the tradition of win-win cooperation, jointly maintain the stability of multilateral trade system and global industrial and supply chains, and continuously expand the cooperation space and fields between the countries. I have once again appealed to the Chinese government to use its influence on Russia in this war even more strongly. As a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, China has a special responsibility. 
we should work together on this in the G20 framework. Therefore, it is important that China continue to not supply weapons to the aggressor in Russia. Germany is keen to maintain good ties with China, its biggest trading partner, despite wariness over Beijing's growing assertiveness and the refusal to criticize Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Germany's recently published national security strategy describes China as a partner, competitor and systemic rival. Schultz has said he wants to avoid over-reliance on Chinese trade and diversify Germany's supply of key goods, an approach he called the risking while rejecting the idea of decoupling from China. The position was echoed last month by the group of seven leading industrial powers, most of which are heavily dependent on trade with China. Li told Germany's top CEOs on Monday that the lack of cooperation was the biggest risk. Germany has acknowledged that major global problems such as climate change can only be resolved together with China, and the official motto of Tuesday's meeting is acting sustainably together. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said last week that the choice of Germany as a least first stop fully reflects the high importance China attaches to China-Germany relations. He said China looked forward to sending positive signals to the world to strengthen dialogue and cooperation, and joining to address challenges to promote the prosperity and development of the world economy. After visiting the European Union's biggest economy, Li traveled to France, the second biggest where he will attend the summit for a new global financing pact, which is being held at French President Emmanuel Macron's initiative. Now please uh, take a look at the weather forecast for the world's major cities. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a good day.